years. Uh, you played Jack Arnold for seven years, I think, 1988 to 1993, or something like that. But, um, but Dan is also an amazing career on, on Broadway. Uh, we remember Dan from his roles as Jimmy Hoffa in Good Bobby, legendary football coach Vince Lombardi in Lombardi, uh, Gene Shepard in The Christmas Story, the musical, and others. Um, the Vietnam War vet and Brooklyn native, Dan is here today to discuss his new off-Broadway comedy, Dinner with the Boys. Um, and thank you, Pat Addis, for arranging this. Pat is the lead producer on uh, Dinner with the Boys. Uh, Dan will be co-starring with Ray Abruzzo from The Sopranos and Richard Zavaglia uh, from Donnie Brasco. So Dinner with the Boys opens on May 4th at the Eight Point Theater on 42nd Street. Uh, so Dan, we appreciate you giving us some insight to uh, what Dinner with the Boys is like. Producer Pat Addis, that are known as the Energizer Bunny. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, uh, Pat and I are involved. We're on the board at the New Jersey Rep in Long Branch, who just got a new site. <coughs> Maybe Brookfield would want to invest. <laughs> 300 million, do a lot of plays with that. <laughs> and, um, it's a unique theater, one of the few theaters that ever listen to me. They only do new plays. As you know, my, the last line on my bio is, Dan does not do plays by old dead white cats. <laughs> so I only do new plays because we need to further uh, and encourage our writers with a lot of good plays that they're not getting produced. So uh, that's how I got involved with uh, Pat. and. Uh, but the play, Dinner with the Boys, I am not a writer who acts, I'm an actor who writes, and it's a big difference. Uh, I only write for my friends, and this play was written a number of years ago for Charles Durning, Dom DeLuise, Peter Falk, and Jack Klug. And I was fortunate enough to hear them read it twice. And then Dom passed, and surprisingly, Peter got sick. So I buried the play, and then uh, this Christmas will be the third anniversary. Charlie Durning and Jack Klugman uh, passed on Christmas Eve, four hours apart. So once they passed, we decided to dig it out again. It was always Dom's fair, and Charlie's. So. And the initial idea actually came, I was driving Dom Delaways down to the Frank Sinatra golf tournament, where he was, I played, he didn't, but he was entertaining. And uh, he asked me what I was working on. And I told him I wanted to write a very serious play about all the violence we are consuming on the video games and our kids. And this is a while back, so it's only gotten worse. And during the two-hour drive, it became a very funny, bizarre comedy, as you can imagine with Dom DeLuise. So, <laughs> um, and uh, it's always a pleasure for me to be able to bring up the names of those fine actors. And I got to tell you, to this day, some of the funniest lines in a play are still Dom Delaware's ad-libs, so, which I take full credit for. <laughs> I remember Peter, who never cracked up on stage. Dom, out of context, it's not funny, but he said something to do with the wrist, and everybody in the place, it's still one of the funniest lines. And Peter just looked at the audience and said, it doesn't say that here. <laughs> and I yelled out, it does now! <laughs> he says, he's not there. So uh, if there's any questions, that's our play. It, we, we, we did it the old-fashioned way. We did it at, out of town. We worked on it. Uh, we cut it. It, it. Even with the intermission, it runs less than two hours. Uh, we got 12 <laughs> reviews, right? Every one of them, to my total surprise, was excellent. We didn't even get good. They were all great, which shocked me because it is a bizarre, <coughs> twisted kind of play. You can imagine written for those four guys, right? So um, we've had a lot of fun with it. We did it there for over 40 performances. We packed it. I don't think there was a broken nose in New Jersey that didn't see this <laughs> They all came. And uh, we were selling $10 seats to sit in the lobby and watch it on the closed feet. So it's really more a tribute to those four people than it is to me. It was fun writing for them and working with them. So we have a great time. Ray Abruzzo, he's a chameleon. He plays both the parts that uh, Peter
Peter Falk and Jack Club been playing. We get to kill them twice a night. <laughs> Is there any questions? Anybody want to? Yes, Is it a limited run? No, I mean, right now it's open ended. If we do as well as we did in New Jersey, perhaps we'll close and move to a bigger venue. My personal opinion, I, I don't think it's a big play. It's all, it was actually written to help regional theaters. It's a kitchen. It's not long, but we did put an intermission in because that's important to regional theaters. They need to sell the, the candies and the programs and, that, and to get people involved. And that's where they make their pitch. That's where they go up and they shake hands with a first time, uh, you know, a first time customer and they get them to buy subscriptions. So uh, I, I don't think it. There's been a lot of talk. Some people wanted to move it right away to a bigger place, but I, I like the intermission. What's wrong with off Broadway? You know, that's. I've been an actor for 40 years. I still think the biggest loss to the theater was Joe Pat. Joe, Joe didn't invest in plays, he invested in people. And I liked working down in the public with Joe. And I like being in a small venue. But I don't make those decisions. Pat makes them. I just hate <laughs> <laughs> And I steal jokes. Yeah. Would, you, would you consider making it one, you know, long act taking out the intermission? No, no I wouldn't. No. No, it has a perfect intermission in it, and uh, it just amazes me how hungry people get. <laughs> and you'll see, we'll talk about that when you come. I don't want to give it away. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, I, 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 that would not help the regional theaters. And it's short anyway. So. I'm not a big fan of waiting for Gatto or Godot or whatever you want to call it. But I thought the best line in, I read in other reviews is, it's like waiting for Godot, but only half the time, and something actually happens. <laughs> so that's what it is. So, anybody else? No? Well, I hope very we... Very shy today. Everybody shy? Very shy today, I'm surprised. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. I hope all your actors are taking good care of themselves. After the history of the others, all oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, they were a little older, you know, when we started. Yeah. No, Charlie would appreciate it. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. Right. There we go. Uh, yeah. No. We, we actually we've all just finished with the flu, so hopefully we're going to be okay by the time we open for pre preview. Start April twenty first. Right? But again. We were lucky because we got to do the play before. I mean, a couple of new lines came in just in the new space. The space actually created a couple of jokes last night in the tech years. So, I mean, with the th people I'm working with, who's ever got a joke, they just throw it out. If anybody laughs, it's in the script. <laughs> yeah, more writers should learn that. Too many are writing the stones. Uh, they don't take advantage of the creative people. Right? Yeah. Uh, we just went through the process. We got to, I'm um, leading that up to the director. Uh, you know, you never know. You have to have the understudies. I've never missed a performance. The 286 Lombardis. That's funny. You mentioned Lombardi and, uh, and playing Gene Shepard. It was so easy. Everybody said, oh, it must have been hard. It was actually very easy because everybody I met, especially the NFL, people. They all wanted to tell stories about Coach Lombardi and Gene Shepard. We had all this day. Two years before that I played Jimmy Hoffa. Nobody wanted to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, no, we don't know. <laughs> Never heard. So, you know, it depends on, well, actually Judith Light had the harder thing to do in Lombardi because I think there was three minutes of film on Marie Lombardi. Whereas with me, I had tons. Uh, you know, looking back at your career, is there a role that you could say was my favorite? Uh, is there a role that was my favorite? Uh, I hope that's still to come. I mean, I really enjoy. I was an old jock, so I really enjoyed playing Coach Lombardi. It was a hard show to do eight of those a week. You know, it was so intense. It was like doing an isometric for ninety minutes every performance. But the character I would like to play is Milton Hershey. So I think every entrepreneur should read the biography of Milton Hershey because his commitment to his community was as strong as his commitment to his business. And I think that
that would be a good role model for what's going on here. So, you know, the greed is beyond me. So I don't get it. I don't think anybody's figured out a way how to take it with you yet. <laughs> have you written other things? Yeah, I have. I have. A, Ron Perlman has a screenplay that, uh, you know, under option. I do some ghost writing. I've written on actually some famous movies, but again, I'm not a uh, writer who acts. I never wanted to be known as a writer. I only like, I really like to act, and I really only like to write for my friends. I mean, if you come to dinner with the boys, you'll see Charlie Durning in my performance. You'll see Don Lopez, which is a volume's performance. And you see both Peter Falk and Jack Clubman and what Ray. Ray's like a chameleon. And he played Little Carmine on the Sopranos. Yeah, he's going to walk out of the show in a series, I think. He's, he's, a lot of people don't realize it's him. You would hear the audience talk, that's the same guy. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> No, I wouldn't share it because uh, I wouldn't want the writers to, uh, you know, a lot of them, only their name is on it. Anybody knows anything about Hollywood, there's no one writer on any film. It goes through like ten different, too much, to be quite honest with you. I can't tell you how many scripts I've read and said, I don't want to work this, this is fine. And then by the time you see it, I'm, I know one writer, this is a true story, I know one writer who sold the script and... By the time he was invited to the premiere, it was nothing like what he wrote, so he changed the title and sold it again. <laughs> yeah. Could be a story about that. Yeah. Anybody else? No? Good. Thank you. I hope to see you again.